Hey there, welcome to part five of our video series, Christianity is True. We're looking at the last video here, talking about the evidence to demonstrate that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Thus far, we've talked about what it takes to prove that Christianity is true. We've looked at the four blocks or the four premises showing that truth is knowable and actually truth is actually undeniable. Anyone claiming that truth does not exist is trying to make a true claim themselves. We talked about how the evidence that God is real, that he is big, that he is the best explanation for the beginning, intelligent, and good news. We talked about how the New Testament is a reliable document, not trying to show that it's inspired as an errant, although I do believe those things, but just showing that it's a historically reliable document that we can trust from antiquity and then tonight we're going to look at the evidence that Jesus Christ is God. And if we can show all four of these premises to be true, all four of these blocks to be solid, then it necessarily falls that Christianity is true. Anybody wanting to deny that or object to it has to show uh, their evidence and demonstrate which of these premises is false. Until they can do that, it should follow that Christianity is true. If you were to go to Google tonight and type in the name Jesus Christ in the search box, you would get over 129 million different results. All of these results would be varied. Some say that Jesus was a Messiah. Some say that Jesus was a good dude. Some people say that Jesus did not exist. Some say he was Lord. Some people say he was liar. Some people think he was a schizophrenic lunatic. We want to talk and ask and look at the evidence tonight to show that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You know, many men throughout history have claimed to be from God. In the book of Acts, chapter 3, there's a great story from Gamaliel where he says that even before the time of Christ, there were two men, Thutis and Judas, who claimed to be from God. They gathered a bunch of followers, and then they passed away, and their men dispersed. And Gamaliel gives advice to the Pharisees, and he says, Stop bothering the disciples. If what they're talking about, if Jesus is from God, you can't stop it. And if it's a work of man, it'll fall away in years. How cool are those prophetic words still 2,000 years later are showing that Jesus Christ was not a movement of man, but a movement of God. Uh, there was other men that have claimed to be from God and had tragic endings, Jim Jones, and even more recently and closer to home, David Koresh in Waco, Texas. And we have to ask the question, if these men claim to be from God and they weren't, what makes Jesus special? Why do we put Jesus in a different category? Are there good reasons to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? I'm going to give you four reasons that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And when people push you and ask you to give you evidence, all you need to remember is the acronym FIRM. Fulfilled prophecies, influence on others, resurrection from the dead, and miracles performed. Over 300 times the prophets of the Old Testament predicted what the Messiah would be like. They talked about the virgin birth, where he'd be born in Bethlehem, no bones being broken, buried in rich man's grave, and its resurrection of the dead. Have you ever seen a movie where somebody's meeting someone for the first time, maybe like an airport or restaurant, and they give them descriptors. I'm 6'5", I'm 200 pounds, I'll have a red hat and a blue shirt. And this person is looking for that descriptors to recognize the person's identity. This is what we have with the Old Testament prophecies. Here's how you'll know the Messiah. Here's what he'll do. Here's where he'll be born. Here's what he'll look like. Here's what he'll act like. And Jesus fulfilled these Old Testament prophecies. Jesus had a profound influence on others. C.S. Lewis came up with what we call the trilum, saying that Jesus is either Lord, liar, or lunatic. And the evidence would seem to point towards Jesus being Lord. I mean, he fulfilled prophecies. He rose from the dead. He performed miracles. Uh, he claims to be from God. But some have said, no, he was just lying. He was just making those things up for publicity. But my question to that is, if Jesus Christ knowingly lied about his identity, why would he go to the cross and die? Why would he suffer that way? Most people, if they were lying at that point, would say, you know what? Gigs up. I'm going to move on. I just don't think the evidence points to Jesus being a liar. Some have said that, well, Jesus was just schizophrenic. He was a lunatic who thought he was a liar. A couple of problems with that. He still fulfilled prophecies. He still rose from the dead. He still performed miracles. And also, he had a profound influence on others. He had over uh, hundreds of followers. Uh, even at times, he probably had twelve to 15,000 people listening to some of his messages. And yet, for somebody who's being crazy, I don't think they would gather that type of following. I think the most probable explanation is that Jesus was Lord. Then we talk about the resurrection. Look at all these reliable historians who mention Jesus, the life of Jesus, even mentioning the events surrounding his death and resurrection. I think a great piece of evidence is that the body is missing. If Christ is not risen, then where is the body? I think the resurrection is the most plausible explanation. A severe change in the disciples has to be understood. The disciples go from belief to disbelief, and then they come back to belief. 
almost all of the disciples except for John die a martyr's death claiming that Jesus Christ is resurrecting the Son of God. There had to be some massive event that happened before and after this time. And I think the resurrection is the evidence for that. Finally, Jesus performed a lot of miracles. The Gospels report over 30 plus miracles showing and demonstrating that Jesus had the power from God. I think it's easy to show that Christianity is necessarily true. Follow these premises. If somebody wants to challenge you and say, I don't believe Christianity is true, first ask them, which of these do you deny? Do you deny truth, the existence of God, the New Testament, and Jesus Christ? Hey, thank you so much for taking time to do this. Here's my email, my blog, my Facebook, my Instagram. If you have any follow-up questions or anything that maybe you want to discuss, please email me or contact me. I would love to sit down and just kind of answer some of your questions and help you to have reasons for the hope that you have in Jesus Christ.